Hi, my name is Mary, and um, I'm so glad to be here with you today. We are on day 10. We are walking through Ephesians. It's a 39-day study that we have been doing. I am doing day 10 today. I hope you've been able to follow along. This is section four uh, of the book, which is titled, What Jesus Has Done. And we're gonna be doing day 10, which is titled, Union Made Possible. The scripture that we're gonna be looking at today is Ephesians 2, 11 through 13. And I'll read that to start with. Therefore, remember that formerly you, the Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by the so-called circumcision, which is performed in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at the time separate from Christ, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who formerly were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So this scripture, the insight that um, Pastor shares with us here is the apostle was wanting to remind the, those saints, those Christians, those believers in Ephesus that at one time they were utterly separate. There's five points that Paul um, talks about that the, in, the Gentiles were separate from Jesus. And one of the areas was they were separated from even knowing Christ, knowing the Messiah. They had no hope of ever being saved. Um, the Gentiles were not God's chosen as the Jews were. There was no covenant promise from God to those Gentiles. No hope of a future. No hope in the surety of a savior. And the Gentiles were without God. They did have false religion. Um, there was lots of different kinds of religion, but the result of that had the, of those religions had no hope, no meaning, no purpose, and no direction in life, um, which is true for all religions. All religions that are separate from Christ, there is no hope, there is no future. But on the other hand, the Jews had a meaning in life. They knew the purpose of life. They knew that that purpose was to serve God. And they had direction in the scripture to, um, to obey God. In the scriptures where they found that direction. Through, though the Gentiles were hopeless, lost, and helpless, in Jesus they were able to share in the same bless, blessings in Christians as the Christian Jews. Um, the blood of Christ brought that believing Jew and the believing Gentile into the same hope the same faith and the same future, the same promise. What the believing Jew has, so does the believing Gentile. And as myself, and I'm sure maybe most of us here, um, were Gentiles and we had no hope. And without Christ and what he did, what he made possible by the sacrifice that he gave, when he gave his life as a living uh, sacrifice at the cross, those within the world who come to him through faith, he unites, no matter what nationality they are. How fitting is this scripture as we are in such a time of turmoil in our country, in our, in our world, and yet Jesus makes us all one. He gives us unity. The apostle Paul wanted the saints in Ephesus to see what Christ had done in uniting the Christian Jew the Christian Gentile, they were one. In Christ, there's no partiality. And that all who come to him will equally share. Is that so awesome? We have the same, we have the same promise as the Jews. We have grace. We have mercy. There is no separation when we belong to God. We're all in the same family. We're eating at the same table. And that is so cool. It's so important to think about that, especially, I mean, always, but in this time, this, this age that we find ourselves, apart from the death and resurrection of Christ, we have no hope, no meaning, no purpose. But in Christ, we live within the new covenant, a promise, a covenant. Here, every person washed by the blood of Christ received the same eternal life, the same cleansing of sin, the same spiritual blessings, which is what we 
learned in the very first chapter, Ephesians 1, 3. It's the same hope, the same salvation. Together we are, are part of the same body. Therefore, we have a special union in this large, diverse family that together worships the same Lord and Savior. This is so fitting. I'm honestly amazed at the scripture that was written thousands of years ago. Is for us today. Today, 2020. <laughs> um, you know, throughout the world, the, all the Christians of the world, we're all at the same table. Some of us may differ on salvation, non-salvation issues, but we're still the same family and we can come together and we can worship together and we need to recognize how important it is to remember that the blood of Christ, Jesus paid the ultimate price to bring people, that one human race, whether we're Jew, whether we're Gentile, together to eat at the same table. We need to accept all of our brothers and sisters, no matter what nationality they are, where they live, what they do, what they look like. We need to accept them into our very large family and set aside those issues that cause disunity, that cause turmoil. We need to set those aside. You know, today is the perfect day to make sure that we're taking every opportunity as Christians to be in unity and to show the love of Christ in everything that we do, we point to Christ. We point at what he did for me, for you. He did it for all of us, and we all have the same opportunity. How awesome is that? That is awesome. I am so amazed at this scripture. So fitting. So today, what is God saying to us? What is he saying to you? What is he saying to me? How can I hear? How can I listen? How can I make sure that my life points to Christ in all of my actions? How can I do that? I can do that by showing the love of Christ and what he did for me at the cross. He paid for my sins. He saved me. He's forgiven me. He's given me a promise. He's given me hope and surety. And I love him. And I thank him. And I hope that you will continue on this journey of walking through Ephesians. And we will see you next week. Have a blessed, blessed, blessed day.